Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Natoya and I'm here to help you start incorporating international travel into your life, traveling two to four times a year and doing it all on a budget. So that's what we talk all about on this channel. So if you're interested in that, make sure you hit the subscription button. So guys, in this video, we're gonna talk about like, how do you go about planning a trip to a country you know like nothing or very, very little about? So when I first started traveling, like this was me, <laughs> like something would just interest me about a country, like one, something small. And then I would just be like, okay, I'm just gonna go to that country. So the whole story behind me going to Sri Lanka for a month, this was why this was when I was in high school. This um urge to go to Sri Lanka, like it started. When I was in high school, my first job was working at Dunkin' Donuts, and my coworker, he's a he was Sri Lankan, right? And he would come to work and like when he heated up his food in the microwave, it was like so spectacular. It was so amazing. Like I wanted to get me some Sri Lankan food. So that was literally the reason behind me going to Sri Lanka. It was nothing deep. It was just the food smelled really good. And I was like, I want to learn some more. So a few years later, I booked a month long trip in Sri Lanka and I ate a ton of food. It was amazing. Oh, it was so awesome to fulfill that dream. <laughs> But yeah, I've traveled to many different countries because one small aspect or even a big aspect like the food, that's a part of the culture, it just sparked my interest and I was like, I'm going to go, even though I knew very little bit about the country. So what do you do if you're in this situation? You're like, mm, I want to go to this country, but I don't know anyone who's been there. I don't know anything about the culture, the language, all that jazz. So let's talk because I'm in the middle of planning my month long trip to Guatemala. And I know very, very little about Guatemala. I just know there's many different like historical sites. And it's just, I don't know, know a lot about Guatemala, but I do wanna go there and eat some yummy foods. That's one thing I know for sure. So let's talk. So first of all, this is fun and this is, is exciting because it's just, it's just up from here. You have one part of the, country's culture that you're interested in, or something that sparked your interest, there's gonna be so many more things that you're going to discover and it's just gonna be so fun and so exciting. So that's the good news, it's just up from here. So get ready. So the first thing you need to do is, and this is the most important, you need to learn the country's norms. You need to learn the do's and the don'ts. You have to know all the things that you should not do, which is considered rude and disrespectful and all the things that you should do that shows that you're, you're, that shows your respect. And on top of that, you need to know the things that would like, you know, some earn you some brownie points like uh, with the locals. So this is simply a Google search away all these answers. Whatever country you're going to Google, for example, I would Google um, cultural norms in Guatemala or things not to do in Guatemala or things to do in Guatemala. It's just a Google search away, read some articles online, watch some YouTube videos, very simple. But what I'm talking about when I mean brownie points, it's just, just things to show or actions you can take to um, show that I appreciate being here in your country. I'm willing to learn. I have respect for your country. I'm respecting your space, all that jazz. What I mean by this is simple things like if you can't speak in the local language, speak in the local language. If there are some gestures that um, it's common and it's not it's not really expected of foreigners, um, just do it anyway. Like in Japan, there was a lot of things that just wasn't expected from foreigners. Like they didn't, if you didn't do it, they wouldn't like think you're rude and disrespectful. They just expect that from foreigners because we don't know, we're not a part of the culture. We just don't know these things, right? So if you just do these things, it'll shine a great light on you. So for example, I always talk about Japan, um, but for example, a simple Google search away would tell you when you get into someone's house in Japan, you take your shoes off, you bow, like you say, thank you for welcoming me, welcoming me in Japan, Japanese. But another thing you can do is you can bring a small gift. You can bow, you can give them the gift. While they wouldn't expect a foreigner to do that, especially a foreigner that 
doesn't know much about Japan, isn't living in Japan, they're just there on a vacation, they wouldn't expect you to do that. It just shows that you care and that you really want to show your appreciation. So those little things, they do count. And on top of that, it helps you to build uh, like long-term relationships. There's lots of people in Japan that I'm still in contact with even after all these years. So that is the big one. You need to know cultural norms, do's and don'ts. Next, you need to start planning your trip. So what I recommend is go to Google again and just find someone that's an expert in that country. So someone that's been there for like a month or someone that's taken multiple trips there. Just someone that knows a lot about the country. And on top of that, someone that's been to different parts of the country so they can give you like real legit advice that this is the best place for you to go. So I found this girl um for Guatemala. She's going to be my girl to help me plan my trip to Guatemala. Her name is Claire from Claire Itch Itchy's Feet. I'll link her um I'll link her blog in the description because she has a lot of advice on Guatemala and she's going to save me so much time. And I try to be like be like that for you on this channel. That's why I make so many in-depth videos about um the places that I uh, that I go to. You know, I like to stay places for a month and I like to travel to different places in that country. So if you if you don't know, I've been to Croatia. I made a pl playlist about that. And I made a whole play playlist about Paris. This is a new channel, so I don't have all the countries that I visited, but I do have a lots of videos on those two countries in particular. So make sure you check that out above and below. So yeah, like I was saying, make sure you find someone that's very knowledgeable. And what you're gonna learn from them is get an outline of your trip. You wanna know where the places you should go, and what you should do. And when you know where you should go and what you should do, you can create that outline of your trip. What I know now about Guatemala is a few cities that I wanna go to, the, and then on top of that, the length of time I should spend in those cities, which is so cool, that was really helpful. And then next, let's talk about money, a budget. The next thing you need to do, now that you know that what you wanna do and where you wanna go, you need to figure out how you can do it all on a budget or your budget. So you need to know how much um, your accommodations are going to cost, how you can do it on a budget, food, all that jazz, you know, all the things we talk about on this channel. You need to know how each and every aspect of your trip, how much it's going to cost you so that you can prepare for that. I do recommend that you learn a bit of the language. And when I mean a bit, a bit of the language, I'm talking about Thank you. Excuse me. Excuse me is such a big one. I realize if you're going to learn any side note, if you're going to pick up any phrase or word in a country that you're visiting, excuse me is like golden because you can use it for excuse me to get somebody's attention. You can use it for excuse me like, oh, if you're on a train and you need them to move, it's just and excuse me to apologize. It's just such a useful word. So anyway, just pick up some um, words and phrases in the local language, like again, excuse me, thank you, or if you can, how much is, and then you can insert whatever, or the phrase where is, and then you can say where it, like for example, where is the Eiffel Tower? Just do a quick Google search on useful phrases for the country that you're visiting. So for example, I'm going to Guatemala, my Spanish sucks, but I am gonna learn, um, I do know the basics, but I am gonna learn different things like where is X location or um, how much is X. So I'm definitely gonna pick up some more Spanish and I suggest you do the same. Next, your job is now, now that you have everything planned, you know what you're doing, you won't be a rude American now that you have all that good. Next, your job is to allow yourself to open up to new experiences because this is all gonna be new to you, right? Going to this country that you don't know much about even though, you, even though you did the research, it's gonna be so many new experiences. Your job now is just to open up to those experiences and enjoy your time abroad. So guys, I really hope this video helped. If you have any questions, any comments, anything you need help with, make sure you comment in the description and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.